We're going to be having today a very interesting story when Jesus spit at someone's eyes. <laughs> and after his prayer, this man received sight. And you know, I thought about this moment. It is not a pleasant thing, right? Because man has been blind. Can you imagine he came to Jesus? He probably expected just a prayer and instead he's got this spit at his face. Again, he hasn't had eyes. It was sudden to him, probably maybe shocking to him. It was in the form maybe of an insult for him. I don't know, but it was a shocking moment. So sometimes what God is doing with us, he causes us to be in shock, in confusion. Sometimes his actions are absolutely unpredicted, absolutely unpredicted, because God, he is self-sustained. He doesn't need to give anyone a report about his plans or about what he is going to be doing next moment. And we have to be flexible. I call this sermon, Has God Ever Spit on Our Eyes? And again, even I just talked about this occasion, about this time when Jesus granted this healing, but it is also about us compare it with a tree. Do you know that God sees us as trees? The difference between those trees behind those windows, we are walking trees. We are walking trees. But he still sees us as trees trees. He uses this image very often in the scripture when he speaks about certain processes which are connected with us as humans. Today is a very important object of our attention is a tree. Tree, definition. I know you, you know what tree is, but why I brought this definition? Because you will see some similarity between trees and our bodies. I took that from Merriam-Webster dictionary. Tree, something is in the form of or resembling a tree, such as a much branched system of channels, especially in an animal body. How it's been called? The vascular tree. We all have vascular tree in our bodies. Do you agree with me? We have a stem, a spine, and we have a system of vessels which like branches in a tree. And I believe that is why God compares us with the trees. It is not only a spiritual image, but also physiological or natural closeness with the system, as we just read here. Some wise sayings about trees. First one, storms make trees take deeper roots. So as humans, we are growing, we're becoming more mature when storms coming into our lives. Another one, one that would have the fruit must climb the tree. It requires certain amount of energy, it requires certain amount of work to get fruits if we would like to get them. The trees that are slow to grow bear the best fruit. If you are fast eater, if you're eating fast, I would recommend you to slow down. It is not healthy, it is not good. <laughs> On those images you would see that some trees really look like humans, like human bodies. And what is interesting, as humans we do have a disease when our hands and feet become like branches of the tree. You will see that on the next slide. It is called Three man illness, epidermodysplasia verusiformis. You see the two examples of people who's got this rare disease. I believe it is a virus kind of disease when, when their hands and feet become like a branches of a tree. Literally, they look, they even look, the surface even looks like a tree. And there is no cure of those diseases. And now we're coming to our spiritual part. As I said to you, there are several places in the scripture where God compares us with a tree. For example, Psalm number one, one of my favorite psalms, because it is a classical, perfect example of God's teaching. Of God's teaching. If you ever would like to learn how to prepare some material or message from the scripture, Psalm number one is absolutely classical and perfect material for it. 
It starts with the word blessed. How blessed are those who reject the advice of the wicked? Don't stand on the way of sinners or sit where scoffers sit. What God wants to tell us in our first verse that those people who would like to be blessed, they have to be able to withstand or to reject the advice of the wicked. But before rejecting something, we have to get understanding of what wickedness is. Because uh, you have to be able to discern what advice you should reject and what advice you should accept. And what wickedness is, you probably know that, it is a life or life path without regulations, restrictions and commandments of the Lord. And don't stand on the way of sinners. So we have to remove ourselves from the path which normally sinners take. Or sit where scoffers sit. Do not spend time with scoffers. And you know who scoffers are, who made fun about anything. For it is those people for whom holiness means nothing. Or they can make fun of even holy things. There is no fear of the Lord in the hearts of those people. So do not spend time with them, otherwise you can get this disease. Their delight, he means those people, their delight is an Adonai's or Lord's word or Torah. On his Torah or word of the Lord, they meditate day and night. There is a joy inside of God's word and we have to be able to unlock this joy even this pleasure as human beings we are attached to the joy and to pleasure if we do not get joy or pleasure from God's word we wouldn't really deepen into it that's how we have been created we are attached to something which uh, which is pleasant to us so God says there is opportunity for you and also, and then he compares us with trees. They are like trees planted by streams. So you, you saw those trees in British Columbia. British Columbia is extremely, extremely blessed province. You could see many trees which are really planted or placed by God himself near the waters. And they bear their fruit in season. In order for us to bear fruit, we have to be nourished. We have to be nourished. Actually, it is our responsibility to take proper care of our bodies. I, I told you already, do not go sleep late on Saturday evening. <laughs> take your time. Go sleep earlier. You know why? Take proper care of your body. And then you will be able to grasp something on Sunday, which is also helpful for our bodies. Because word of the Lord, seriously, not only bread, not only meat, not only vegetables, but word of the Lord is necessary for our bodies to function properly. It is necessary. And then you will be able to bear your fruit, your fruit in God's time. So it is a matter of time. We can bear fruit when God's season comes into our lives. But we have to be wise. Do not miss this season because God will hold accountable us if we would miss. And then it says their leaves never wither, which means they would never be dried up. And as I told, as I told you, we have spine, we have system of vessels like a branches and flow of the blood in us and all those liquids are necessary for our branches to function properly and even color of our skin and even conditions of our skin to be properly that's exactly about us and everything they do succeeds success is promised in psalm number one god's success not our humanly constructed success because sometimes what we see as success in god's eyes is a failure is not success at all our main story is taken from Gospel of Mark, chapter 8, verses 22 through 26. When Jesus had spit on his eyes, it is about blind man healing at Beth Saida, Betsud, Betsud from original language. Quickly, we'll tell you what Betsud means. Bet, it is about Sheol, what we call hell. Sheol, it is actually a boat of 
light and darkness. It is a huge, limitless space where light and darkness stay or present. Human bodies, figuratively, inwards, metaphorically, so our bodies, our inner part, is a part of this shoal. And as a part of shoal, it is also contains light and darkness. And we have to be wise and faithful to manage properly our own bodies as a boat of darkness and light. We have to allow and we have to partner with the light from the Lord to occupy and to take more and more parts of our bodies. And then our bodies would be nourished well, even physically, physiologically. And Tzud take provision by hunting. Beit Tzud means place of Sheol where people get their provision by hunting. And if you remember the story of Jacob and Isa, one of them was a hunter, right, Isa, and Jacob was a man of the tent, a dweller of the tent. And of course mom loved more Jacob. And of course she tried to bless him, to nourish and support him. But Isa, he got his provision by hunting as a hunter, but he missed something what was very important in his life. So I'm not saying that hunting is a bad thing, but hunters sometimes they rely too much on their hands. When I say hunting, it's not only killing animals. Hunting could be anything what we do by our hands. Carpentry, construction business, anything what we do by our hands or by our talents, by our natural abilities. We are hunters if we provide for our lives only by our natural abilities. And what God wants to say to us that when we rely only on our hands, feet, our head, our intellect, we are hunters and we are not secure. We have to be open for Jesus' visitation because Jesus wants to bring completeness to our lives, even when we are totally skilled with our hands. Some people call those people with golden hands, handy men or handy women. Those people also need Jesus, right? Because Jesus can bring divine completeness. So in verse 22, Jesus came to that place, place of hunters, place which was a part of Sheol where hunters provided their lives. He came to Betsud and they brought a blind man to him. They heard about Jesus' healing power and they brought blind man to him and begged him to touch this blind man. They relied so much on his healing power that they asked him fervently to touch this blind man. Verse 23, Jesus took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. Have you ever thought? If people so fervently asked Jesus to lay hands and heal the blind man from their town, why then he took him by the hand and led him out? Why? Do you think it was some kind problematic in this town? Maybe people didn't really believe in who Jesus was. Maybe they just wanted to use Jesus, right, as a healer. We know only one, that this town has been called Sheol, where hunters dwelled. And Jesus didn't want for this miracle, creative, creative power, miracle, a cure among hunters, dwellers of Sheol. Probably those people, they didn't have readiness in their minds and hearts to accept this miracle properly. That is why Jesus took this man and led him away from this town. In our lives, season comes where God wants to intervene, where God wants to bring completeness to our lives. And sometimes it requires intimacy. Sometimes it requires for us to be alone with him, away from the human setting of things of this world. We have to be wise enough to leave the place of our normal dwelling, to go to the place of the solitude and to accept his 
visitation properly, one-on-one, -on -one, nose to nose, in intimacy of the moment. He created intimacy by uh, literally leading him away from the town. And when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands on him, he added his saliva, saliva, applied his saliva on his face, which means material, certain material, and then laid his hands, put his hands on him, he created a sphere, a setting of creation. At this moment he created not from nothing, but from his saliva. But then, very interesting, he asked him if he saw anything. Okay, I'll go further, maybe it's not clear enough. Verse 24, and this man looked up and said, I see men like trees walking. And then he put his hands on his eyes again. Some preachers, you probably heard that some preachers told you that it wasn't successful from first time. I've heard those sermons. It wasn't successful from first time. That is why Jesus prayed again and they taught me in previous years, you have to pray again and again and again, because even Jesus didn't get result from first time. So you have to pray many times until person will be healed. That's not exactly what was happening here. You will see difference when he put his hands on his eyes again and made him look up. And he was restored and saw everyone clearly. Do you see? First time, he didn't make anything. He just asked. Second time, he made him look up. Do you see difference? So my question to you, why first time he asked him if he saw anything? Huh? His own faith. His own faith, that's one. What next one? Do you see difference again? First time he saw men like trees walking. It was necessary for this man to see men like walking trees. Was it necessary? If you think it is necessary, why it was necessary for him to see men as walking trees? How God sees us? Same way. He sees us as walking trees. After first moment, after first application of Jesus' hands on this man, this blind man got spiritual sight. Spiritual sight is a little bit different. Spiritual sight sees us as human, as God, divine creation. Divine creation with a system of vessels. And we remember that the soul of a man is where? And a blood, right? And a blood. Do you remember that? And blood spreads this soul around man as sap from the stem goes to the branches. So when he uh, put his hands on man first time, he asked him, he sent the word, living word, in a form of a question. He sent his word from his mouth in a form of a question into man's ear. And as Dean said, it was in connection with man's faith. And man responded, he looked up and responded that I see men like trees walking. Then he put his hands on his eyes again and second attempt made him, made him look up and he was restored so everyone clearly. So clear sight means we have spiritual sight and we have physical sight. That's how God sees clear sight. Those people who have only physical sight, they are blind in God's eyes. Those who do not see other people as objects of God's intervention, as objects of God's work, they are blind. And Jesus restored first spiritual sight to this man because that was more important for him than physical sight. Clarity is combination of spiritual sight and physical sight. Verse 26, then he sent him away to where? To his house. Every one of us has our own house. 
Every one of us has our own group of people to whom God sends us. But before God sends us, he grants to us spiritual sight and physical sight. Otherwise, we would not be effective and fruitful. And what he told him, neither go into the town, nor tell anyone in the town. See, he not only led him away from town, but he commanded him, never come back to the Sheol where hunters dwell. I'm not saying that God didn't love those people. He loved them, but that was not mission of this man. That was not mission of this man to go to this town and to spread the news about Jesus. Or season didn't come yet to this town. <laughs> I like those guys. Once we came to my friend's apartment and I, I've had black suit, very nice, fancy black suit. <laughs> He's got <laughs> this guy. This dog, and this dog came and started doing like that, and the whole my suit was covered with his saliva. <laughs> it was terrible. Do you see, salivation goes first, and then salvation. That's actually my saying. You wouldn't find this. It just came to my mind that salivation, he spit at his eyes before salvation entered his life. And what was happened with this blind man actually brought fame to the Lord. Because any act of salvation brings fame to Adonai, to our God. Next place from scripture taken from the book of Isaiah. Isaiah is a great prophet. He uses many different images, prophetic images in his word. And in order for us to understand it, we have to be able to grasp the soul from the Gospel of Mark. So Isaiah chapter 55, verses 12 through 13. Yes, says Isaiah, you will go out with joy, which means time will come for anyone who is oppressed. If he trusts to the Lord, to his promises, he will go out, which means he will go out from the setting. For us, in order for us to be really delivered, we have to leave the place of hunters. We have to leave the place where people dwell only by the strength of their hands and they have hope only on themselves. You will go out with joy. You will be led forth in peace. As human beings, we are not capable to deliver us by ourselves. There, there are moments and seasons where God helps us. He, you will be led forth in peace. But we have to start with ourselves, with our own efforts. We have to examine ourselves, we have to examine where we dwell and to meet Jesus. As you come, the mountains and hills will burst out into song, and all the trees in the countryside will clap their hands. Now we understand what Isaiah meant. He spoke about people who in authority, mountains and hills, and he spoke about people who lived in the countryside. They will clap their hands. Cypresses will grow in place of thorns. Speaking about cypresses, Cypressus sempervirens is famous for its longevity. What Isaiah says here, led by God, that longevity would come into the life of those who will place their hope into the Lord. And myrtles will grow instead of briars. Thorns, speaking about thorns, we are reminded about crown of thorns worn by Christ. You remember this story from the Gospel. And myrtles will grow instead of briars. Again, myrtle, the timber of some myrtle species has been used to manufacture bridges, furniture and railway slippers. It is an excellent tree, long-lasting tree. So what Isaiah does here, he stresses the theme of longevity, of long lasting, of eternity. This will bring fame to Adonai, to the Lord, as an eternal imperishable sign. So longevity of those who put their trust into the Lord is a sign of glory or fame of the Lord himself. 
We already got understanding, I hope, why did Jesus ask a blind man if he saw anything? Because Jesus knew that spiritual sight came into this man's life. Gospel of Mark, chapter 8. And if you do not still understand what I'm talking about, pray that God will give you revelation. God will give you revelation. Image of a tree is very important for us to understand. Why did Jesus ask a blind man if he saw anything? God very often uses questions. I would recommend you to ask God. If you don't understand, do not hesitate to ask him, even loudly. Father God, I don't understand what is going on with me. Please explain me. Let me be able to grasp. Let me be able to be even open for your response and to get a response from you and to get clarity. If you do not have spiritual sight, if it is difficult for you, do not hesitate, ask him. He loves you. He wants to grant it to you. Amen? So this is the last one. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf doesn't wither. Whatever they do prospers. Psalm number 1, verse 3. What are your prayers going to be after that? I just want again to remind you that what has happened with this blind man hasn't been pleasant from the first moment, right? It's been shocking. It's been shocking. If someone spits on another one, it is normally insulting, insulting some kind of action, right? It's not pleasant. So what comes from God sometimes in the form of an insult in reality is a touch, divine touch, which transforms us if we are open and flexible. God is not always politically correct. He actually doesn't care about political correctness. He doesn't need to give again a report to anyone for anything. He does what he wants and if we are flexible, able enough to grasp it. Do you remember that once Jesus called Pharisees who were highly educated and trained blind leaders or blind people? Why he said that to them? Because they didn't get spiritual sight. They were preoccupied with their own plans, with their own agendas, and they wanted to build and to sustain their own kingdom when they were leaders. But Jesus rebuked them to get spiritual sight. Jesus very often used less important people to get most important revelations and to start his marvelous work with those who have been despised and neglected by the leaders. Do not think that all leaders have spiritual sight. Pray for leaders, for them to get this spiritual sight, to see people as walking trees, which could be nourished by the streams of water. Again, speaking about water, we know that the Word of God is a living water, right? Living water of life. We have to be able to digest, to grasp everything what the Word of God gives. Let us pray. First of all, I would like to remind you about forgiveness. I'm sure there are people who insulted you many times. I'm sure there are people in your lives who wounded you many times as well as in my life. And I'm sure that we are obligated by God's truth to forgive those who caused pain, rejection and bitterness to enter our lives. Let us take a moment now, even one minute. May God, by His divine intervention, remind you the names of those people and please forgive them in Jesus' name. Please forgive them not because they deserved that. Please forgive them because that's what God teaches us. Just release them, forgive them and dwell in the freedom, okay? Let's take a moment. Maybe one of those people is you, you yourself. If you do not forget yourself, release yourself. Give yourself to God's hands. God loves you. Maybe you insulted somebody else. Maybe you caused somebody else to suffer. Again, forgive yourself and ask God to give you opportunity to come and to communicate with that person in God's love and to ask 
him or her to forgive you. Father, I just lift up everyone who is in this room, including myself, and in Jesus' name, I forgive everyone whom you reminded me for what they've done in my life. In Jesus' name, I bless them and give them to your hands and ask you, please be merciful to them. I forgive myself for anything what I've done to myself. And I ask you, Father, please help us to be trees which are planted by the streams of your living water. Let us be fruitful. Let us be nourished and fed properly. I pray for those who, whose vessels are cluttered with, with fat. And you know, if you have high blood pressure, your vessels probably suffering because of your diet. Sometimes our preferences kill us. They just kill us. We love something which is absolutely not healthy. And I, Father, ask you, please give us strength and firm position to deny anything what not helpful, not healthy. Let us be wise managers of our bodies. In Jesus' name I'm praying. Amen. And also, I would ask, Father, please give us fear of the Lord that we would not leave cups on the chairs. We would not leave crumbs and anything else on the chairs. Let us be wise owners of what you've been entrusted to us. In Jesus' name. Amen.